Okay, yeah, so hello everybody. So nice that we have a good uh, audience here. Many, many people are, are well known, all friends. Very welcome to everybody. And um, yeah, I will present today not a real waste uh, topic, but uh, yeah, I call that a little bit an extended waste topic. So I want, what I want to do is actually to somehow include waste management into the overall environmental problems. And so let's see how it is, how we, how we get to that. Now, 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 where are we? I think it is here. Okay, so we have this and then I stop this and we have this. Okay, yeah, so this is this is the idea, yeah. So first I'm a little bit general and then I come to the to the waste management and I want to 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 emphasize uh, some some more broader aspects of waste management, which may be also interesting to to incorporate your research into the overall environmental scene. So let me see. Okay, now, the main thing is all the problem that we have is uh, at the moment with the environment is the anthropocentric thinking that uh, anthropocentric acting leads humans to the existing threatening situation. So we say the world is ours and we can do what we want and we can extract everything. And, uh, you know, we did that all the time. But now we find out that we have problems with uh, pollution and um, we got the air pollution, we get uh, climate change with desertification of, of land, we have contaminated rivers, we have, uh, we have, okay, I have to let them come in, okay. We have contaminated rivers, we have uh, melting ice, we know that all, and uh, destruction of natural habitats and plastic in the oceans and uh, let me see and we have uh, extreme weather conditions, yeah and this what has this to do with waste and this is actually my topic this is what i want to tell you yeah because the reasons are co2 emissions world population growth abundant lifestyle we have uh, increasing exploitation of natural resources we have the limited natural resources you see that here yeah this is for energy you know, all these numbers here, this is for lead, and you know, what you can see all the, the um, um, sorry, I have also to let the people come in. Yeah. Evangelos, can you let the people come in? Okay, no, sorry, not probably not. Uh, no, 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 no. Here we are. And you see, this is all the predictions, you know, how long we have the methods, you know that all. Uh, these are not correct predictions, but it shows us that there are many methods and elements, uh, endless, and uh, we have to do something with that. Things that we should not forget is when we uh, think about the material that we use, that we have the so-called ecological rucksack, that means if you if we produce one coffee machine, you know we need two hundred ninety eight of it is exactly that number. That's another story. But we have a huge amount of material that we use for manufacturing a coffee machine, and for the computer it is one thousand five hundred kilo. Can you imagine? Yeah, one point five tons for one computer, and how many computers do we have? So 
this is this is one thing that we always have to keep in mind we have to be aware of that and also just the production yeah for one kilo of copper needs 420 kilo of virgin materials yeah so this is this is something always to consider so what are the effects loss of biodiversity yeah we know that we have a huge number you read that in the newspaper every day that uh, many people are uh, many birds are, are you know extinguished um, many people many animals are in danger we have the discussion with the bees this is not a bee but looks similar um, with the bees you know and uh, there are some areas where they say we have to make artificial uh, how is it called you know um, Incimation, no, not incimation, artificial, so, um, so that the, that the fruits grow, yeah, get the pods from one plant to the other, I don't know the name at the moment, so this is, this is, this is very serious actually, and we have programs here in Germany also to save the bees and uh, you know all the insects many insects are gone we see that also by ourselves when we drive the car and the windshield is not covered with 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 uh, insects dead insects as we had in the past and there is a colleague here from hamburg university uh, professor blau uh, Glaubrecht. he made a very uh, so people that are interested in in this aspect uh, of environmental problems um, he's an evalu evaluation evaluation biologist and he wrote a very very interesting book uh, also easy to read and uh, his statement is that um, the diversity loss is even more dangerous than climate change okay I mean, this is he is the expert in that field but it tells us something about the dimension of of this problem because you know when the food chain or they when when the when the the, the, uh, the chain of the animals uh, when this is interrupted then uh, we get we get huge problems uh, with the uh, functioning of our environment now then we have global pollution yeah always the problem and uh, I always like to point out that we have low emissions from treatment, but still we have emissions. Yeah, we have never 100% uh, treatment efficiency, and uh, so we have always uh, some materials that enter into the into the environment. People are now more aware about the abra abrasion of tires, yeah, which is really a huge dimension of material, and we find also these. These, uh, this rubber is one of the one of a high proportion of the uh, micro pollutants or the the uh, micro particles in the ocean. Yeah, this is actually also from abrasion, and we can imagine. I mean, this has got it, it was washed off from the, from the road, goes into the ditches, and then into the rivers. So, and then from asphalt, you know, the from the brakes, and you all these things contribute and, um, and then nowadays we have all the problems with the uh, with with accidents flooding uh, which are very severe and uh, i think here in in germany now we produce waste from our uh, huge floods over several hundred thousand tons of waste yeah so it is really something that we have to consider and then this terrible situation in, 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 in Ghana, I think mostly, where the, we sent all our, our uh, computer materials and uh, only a few parts of these computers are reused. And, uh, and you see there are huge areas polluted by these mat materials. And I, I can also add to that what we saw in the newspapers recently, where they pile up all the um, dresses and the, the fashion that we sent to, to Africa. Yeah. Now we have always to, to, to consider 
And I always try to repeat that all the time because this is really, I mean, it, it is, is this trivial. On the other hand, it is essential. It does that mass can neither be created or destroyed. Yeah. So all the emotions that we have, they must, they are somewhere. Yeah. They go somewhere. They are not gone. They are not away. Uh, and uh, it really would be interesting, you know, to, to really see, uh, try to follow up uh, on a scientific program where all these um, materials, elements end up. And you see here, mostly, you know, all our uh, production of emissions and uh, then mostly they are transported through the air and then they deposit, they have dry and wet deposits and then they come back to them. So they are, they are not gone. Some are perhaps a little bit, um, uh, stay a little bit longer in the, in the atmosphere, in the upper atmosphere, but uh, in general, they all come back. Yeah. So now I'm called that a little bit for this uh, extended waste term. And uh, if we see that all gaseous, liquid and solid residues of gases from thermal biological processes, manual sludges, solid waste and contaminant, this is all waste, yeah. So that means the CO2 that comes out of an industrial plant is a waste, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a gaseous waste. Then we have the, uh, the portfolio of treatment processes where the different types of waste are largely the same. This is also something we have to consider. Yeah, for example, that waste management and sewage treatment has so many things in, in the same. I mean, the anaerobic digestion, uh, water treatment and so on. But these are different disciplines that very often don't work together. And if we consider all these as waste and if we see that all together, then we can also um, see. Uh, we can also, you know, contribute more to the problems of all to, or to the chances for eco cities, for eco agriculture, eco tourism, renewable energy, water resources. So these are all areas where, when we see the waste a little bit broader, where we can actually contribute. Now. We have the planetary boundaries. Yeah, this is a, um, a group of uh, scientists uh, try to yeah to bring some order to all these environmental flows, and uh, they created this sorry this um, planetary boundaries, and they said we have about nine especially uh, important boundaries. And the idea is, you see that here we have uh, green in the middle, we have yellow and red. And if the amount of one of these, like let us say, um, biochemical flows like the nitrogen, this is in the red area, that means this is the emissions are higher than our uh, our, uh, our environment can can bear yeah so we overload by this the environment and if we are in the green area then it's fine then we are in good agreement with the environment yellow we should be careful we should act and red i mean should also act but i mean it shows actually the dimension of the problem yeah, and this is what they what 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 they did, and this is very important also, I think, for politicians, poly, for, for politicians, and so on, so that they see. They call the inner circle in the in the in the, in the green and yellow areas. These call that the safe room uh, for acting. So this this is, and we have we have climate change, ocean acidification. Okay, this is a waste problem. Climate change, CO two is a waste problem then the ozone, then the P and N, of course, it is a waste problem. The aerosols, freshwater use, land use changes, uh, uh, and biodiversity loss has many, many origins, many reasons. 
and the chemical pollution. They, they didn't have any, any uh, for novel entities. That means all the um, man-made or human-made uh, elements, the chlorinated hydrocarbons and so on. They had no limits for that. And also for aerosol, uh, atmospheric aerosol loading, they could not agree on actually rates um, and um, where we stand with these in these two areas. Yeah. So this is, but you see, this is if we see the a little broader based uh, definition, then we can see that uh, we are all involved. Now, uh, extended waste management challenges. Yeah. So we have one thing is product quality, product quality. This is what we do with our in, in waste management. We have also to, to, to emphasize reduction of contaminants in products, thinking at the end, uh, the end of new products, make products more recyclable friendly. Just read in the newspaper that the German government uh, plans that they want to label uh, uh, products uh, if they are repairable or not. So they get, get, get a label on the iPhone and say, oh, this is, you can substitute perhaps the battery or whatever, or this is not possible. It is a start, yeah? it is a start. And uh, I think it's the right direction. Then saving resource based minimization. I always, you know, emphasize that subject very much. And um, what we all can do. Then we have further emission reduction. That means, uh, I mean, we can, Perhaps we need more uh, uh, fourth treatment step in sewage treatment plants for reducing the endocrine substances from the from the effluents, which still go into the into the rivers. Uh, we need then uh, yeah, something, but we not have uh, discussed too much that we that we use waste management as a location for usage. So I mean, I know that. Um, Elena Kosso, she is always with landfill and architecture. Uh, this is the step in the right direction. So we can use, and I come back to that, we can use our locations, not only for, for disposal or for composting or whatever, but we can also use that for energy production and so on. And then we have uh, the treatment of contaminated sites big problem and it's not only it's also the the i see that also a, a problem of the waste management the plastic in the ocean and then we have the final sinks we need the land first and to end and to include society and culture yeah this is important studium generale involving society so i come back to some of these points now, new challenges for waste management facilities. I mean, why should should uh, waste management facilities uh, have not a green environment? Why should not uh, make a lot of um, planting of trees uh, around that? I mean, yeah. And then, as you can see here, this is in England, you, they have also photovoltaic on the roof. Yeah. So what I mean is, and you see here, this is the German sewage treatment plants here in Hamburg, and they have on their sewage treatment plant, they have a windmill. And they um, use significant amount of energy they can uh, substitute by the electricity that they produce for the windmill for the sewage, the tree, uh, operating the sewage treatment plant. So that could be more. Well, here are no trees. They could have also more trees. What I mean is that we use those areas where we have also access to, also to, to, uh, to reduce CO2 by green areas or produce energy by photovoltaic or by doing that um, with windmills. Yeah. So you see here, you see that also now more and more, this is nothing new, but it is something that is, uh, that really had, should, should be done on more or less all the landfills that we use those uh, locations for wind and for energy. Now, you know, I have here just some ideas what, what, what you could all do. We could, we could plant the windmill on top, uh, the, the wind power plant is better word. Then we have the energy plants that you could do. 
plant, then you can heal on the blue area, photovoltaic. And uh, so you make for the power plants, you have an ID plant perhaps already on the, on the area. You produce land for gas, uh, you have electricity from wind and it here, and from the gas, you know, make also electricity, you have a transfer station, you can bring it to the grid, or you use that on site for leachate le treatment, in situ aeration, and so on. So what I'm saying here is, uh, this location can be used much better, yeah. Now, Reduction of contaminants in, 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 in products. You see that here, I always propose, you know, that you should have a kind of evaluation scheme. If a new product goes to the market, um, then the, you have to know before what you do with the product once it becomes waste. Yeah, this is, this is important. So, and uh, first of all, you should uh, have a recycling quota. They should be fixed for different uh, categories of uh, products and uh, like washing machines or whatever. And then after, you know, you always get the residues, uh, you have possibilities for residue treatment. Uh, and if you have that, then you have the target values reached. If you have, uh, the, um, the product is approved, yeah? If you have not uh, uh, achieved that, the product is not approved. And you have to, to improve your product. We have uh, problems, for example, recycling or, or getting rid actually of windmill um, wings, yeah? Which is probably these composite materials. We have probably with uh, nuclear power, we know that. And, um, there are many other uh, ways that we don't know what to do with that. Yeah. So this is something we should consider. And um, resource protection is waste prevention. Prevention. Now we have the problem with all the products that we have. You know, if you see the lifetime of products, they are very short. Yeah. The washing machine is the longest, but you know, printer four years, laptop and so on. And they become all waste or uh, they are reused or recycled. Big problem is the fashion, fashion, fast fashion. I mentioned that already where the Africans also say, I mean, this is too much of these uh, used fashion products. Um, we get a problem with that. And of course we ruin the local fashion market. Now, the idea is that we have secondary waste avoidance and product recycling economy. That means we manufacture new products, we use them, and after usage, they should go back for reprocessing. Yeah. And this is, this is each product should be good. So if we have our shaver or mixer or whatever, it goes back. And then the product, the, the, the producer, the manufacturer has to do something with that and probably repair it, make a secondary product or um, use most of the materials for new products, whatever. But he should do that, yeah, the factory. So that means we have on-site manufacturing, um, um, company and we have also a reprocessing uh, uh, area. Yeah, so two facilities, one by the others, and they are interrelated, of course. And then, of course, we get residues that have to be disposed and maybe recycled by other companies. Yeah. So this is the, and then hopefully, you know, the companies will improve that. Here's this interesting. We had that in the news, in the news uh, that the BMW has uh, built a new electric car and they, they claim this concept car is made 100% of easy to recycle natural materials, CO2 footprint zero. Yeah, not before 2040 on the market. Today, car is, they say that uh, the cars consist already 30% of recycled materials. Well, 
in how far this is uh, what they call recycled and so it's a different story but we are on the right track that's that's it. also the big companies work on that i think that gives hope and this is exactly what we propose now another thing that i always like to propose is the decentralized waste and wastewater concepts yeah i like them i like them quite well we have one in, in Hamburg here, but it really is not really operating uh, well. I'm not sure why, why it is the, the case. Uh, perhaps sometimes it's too complicated and perhaps it's also uh, a little bit more expensive. Now, the idea is that we have, um, we have a water cycle, we have the rainwater, of course, we capture that and then we can use that as a service water then we have the drinking water and then the after use we have separation of the water in house we have the gray water that means from shower washing machines and so on and then we have the yellow water and the black yellow is the urine and black is the faces um, perhaps uh, this is only interesting if we want to recover the uh, nitrogen from the urine if not we can also put the gray and the yellow water to uh, the, the, the the yellow water and the black water together treat that then we have anaerobic digestion of that uh, then we get from the uh, from the uh, then we have the biological treatment yeah uh, so we get fertilizers once if we want to recover the nitrogen and then we have surface water from the gray water that means we have different treatment steps yeah for the gray water perhaps a membrane uh, if we want high quality reuse if not then we can also have uh, constructed wetlands whatever and uh, and then we have the the anaerobic digestion uh, for uh, for uh, and then we can add also the garden waste to that and perhaps some external waste kitchen and garden waste goes also here so actually we have if you see that there is nothing that goes out actually here this is all internal yeah okay this is theoretical but anyway this is a way to go so the kitchen waste we collect uh, in, in in the sink as they do in the u.s or they did in the u.s in, in many areas with the kitchen grinder i like that concept uh, and then you know you don't have a separate bag for that you don't have this smell in the in the kitchen and you put that in and then do that together the idea is you have to have a certain amount of houses so i think you should have at least uh, we calculated that for Singapore about 17, 20,000 people. Otherwise, you don't get any gas production in the black that you can use. Otherwise, because it's too small and the costs are too high. So, so yeah, this is this is something to think about. You need separate pipes, you know, for the for the gray water and for the black water, and uh, yeah, and and uh, and uh, yeah and the kitchen waste can go with the black water yeah okay so perhaps we see more of that some of these sub uh, these projects are actually realized now the hygiene now with all the corona and uh, other diseases we have to take more take care more of the hygiene standard during collection and waste handling the dust aerosols also is, is something that we have more bring under control. We have a lot of dust. I mean, if you are if you're in Senorita, in the bunkers, you know, if you come in and uh, even in plants um, for composting, uh, you see the people that work there without masks and uh, they are um, exposed to fungi spores and so on yeah so this is something we have to do more we have to be more careful about that so that these hygiene problems are also part of waste management 
Further re uh, co contact reduction of contaminants, I talked already about that, and reduce a reduction of the diff diffusion of contaminants. If you see how they apply here, the, the compost, this is uh, very bad. One thing I'd also like to, to highlight is um, that we have to deal more with the manure. I mean, this is really Middle Ages that uh, I think in Germany, it's, I don't know, 80 per 70 percent of the manure that goes back to land is untreated. It is raw manure that they put on, on land. So they should at least be anaerobic digested, also to kill the pathogens and to, to get the gas and actually to reduce the organic, organic content uh, to um, uh, in order to bring that back to soil, yeah, I think that is that is the subject we we have to deal more with that because this is a real a real problem. Now, insufficient waste management, of course, all this littering. This is a waste problem. Right? It's a real waste problem, waste collection problem, uh, and uh, handling and. So we have really think about that to avoid that. How to do that is a different thing. Then we have the contaminated sites. Yeah, uh, this is also a waste problem actually to recover all the plastic from the ocean. Yeah, as far as I know, this is only done by private uh, activities. Yeah, by people that are that, that that put a lot of their personal efforts in to actually recover to, to, to collect the, the plastic from the sea. Yeah, this is a clean up uh, system, which is quite interesting that they have this uh, collection, swimming collection uh, pipes. Yeah, and then they collect the plastic there and then they have a, um, a boat, a ship. Yeah, it's a kind of catamaran in, in the middle. They have this kind of uh, uh, collection system and they bring that to the on the boat and they wash it. And they say also, they claim also that they want to reduce most of the plastic. Okay, yeah. But for me, it would be very important to recover the plastic because otherwise we get more and more fine particles uh, with the corrosion of the plastic in the oceans, and this is really detrimental to the environment. The other thing is now we heard in Germany that they want to recover the munitions from the Baltic Sea, some of them at least, and this is a, it's a time bomb actually because we have also these mustard gases here in the in these uh, in these grenades, and uh, they corrode and uh, it's hard to predict what happens there, yeah. Now, this is all the things that we have to do. And one main thing is, of course, education. This is also what I pledge, which is what we have to do. And we have to broaden our education to the environmental aspects. And everybody that studies any whatever has to, should have such a course. Yeah, I think this is really important. So um, they could also be practical at the university. And uh, I think some, I think uh, Bill, I think some in, 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 um, in Australia, they made kind of model, uni model university so that they make it uh, environmental friendly that uh, actually the students are together with the organization of the um, of the university that they try to make that an environmental friendly university. The other thing is that we have to make courses and all students independent of their disciplines should have an obligatory course on social and environmental sustainability. I think this is, this is a must because there is no occupation where you not, are not dealing with the environment. And it's also important, it's um, hard to say, but also our uh, some of the teachers and colleagues have also to be convinced that this is important. And 
they should gain, gain the knowledge and use the knowledge future, in their future professional lives. And they are also multiplication factors yeah, to others. So we make a, a course in, in, in Beijing at the Tsinghua University, Human Aspects of an Environmental Issues and Solutions with Professor Lu. And um, yeah, this is an international, international master course. We had students from all over the world. Uh, and now we did that also during the Corona time online. It works, but it is of course not, not, not the right way to do that. Um, we had about 30 students uh, from all disciplines, lawyers. We had many people from political science, economics, architects. And that means actually that the level that we present uh, cannot be gone up very deep, but uh, they get a good overview about the environmental problems, what we can do in the situation. I think this is very good. Uh, by the way, this is the, the, the museum, the art museum that is owned by the University of Tsinghua. It's a, the architect is Bata, beautiful museum. And this is the content of the course, environmental sociology, ethics, Anthropocene, global pollution, biodiversity, media, politics, ecological, ecology and art, industrial ecology, great transformation. Yeah. And, and, and the, the interesting thing is that they had in the final work, in their final homework, they had to make, they had a subject, whatever they talk about. Um, and then they have uh, to present that, yeah, you see that in the other picture, and they always have to include a piece of art uh, relating to the subject that they produce. So they could talk about the course, what we did with the course, and then this is here the example you see down. This is what they actually uh, made as a piece of art. Amazing uh, what 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 potential. These students have from all the different disciplines. Very, very good results. So I'm very happy about that. And now what we did is also we did that um, with um, Professor uh, Evangelos, Giderakos, uh, Wenjing Lu, and with uh, Maria Avgyoti. Uh, we made a kind of book accompanying such uh, courses. So it is a kind of textbook. And, uh, you know, we cover, you know, similar things like here, but more expanded. Uh, and uh, it's a book of 350 pages and a lot of pictures in an easy uh, written way so that all the different disciplines can follow. This is also something that I criticize very uh, often that uh, scientific results are presented in a, in a, in a very difficult to read form. And um, yeah, and this is how it looks. Yeah. And that's what we do. So the goal, my final remark is the goal in all aspects of waste management uh, is sustainability. This is what we have to, to do. And we have to strive for living in peace with nature because only if we we, we live in peace in, in peace with nature, even if they, if we accept nature as an equal partner, leave the Anthropocene, then actually we 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 get uh, to the situation that we can save our planet. And uh, yeah, and waste management plants should include renewable energy production, ecological green spaces. Yeah, green spaces and uh, very often I also stress that they have to have an aesthetical appearance. So I'll always like to show this beautiful picture from Marc Chagall that uh, I see an analogy that um, we have the paradise and uh, we left, we had to leave the paradise. I don't say who was for it. We don't want to discuss that, but we had, we didn't behave well, yeah, uh, our ancestors, and so we had to leave the, the, the paradise. And 
I mean, anyway, we have, if we look at nature and so on, it's still a kind of paradise. But now we are in the situation that we also leave this paradise. Okay, let's not do that. Go back to work and thank you very much for listening. Oh yeah, thank you, Raina. Thank you very much, Professor Stegman. You gave us a lot of uh, different possibilities for the future. So we have some time for um, some questions. Yeah. Well, comments. We have here some. Yeah. Mm. Hello. It's a well. Yes. And it's a very good presentation. We appreciate. A little louder. Luca. Yeah. You have a question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Stegman. Thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, I, I was wondering if you can comment or yeah, present a little bit more about the importance of uh, social science in waste management. Uh, I guess as, a, as an engineer, you train on, on treatment, on disposal, but yeah, I can see uh, understanding how people behave and so social science aspects is becoming more and more important in a variety of, of, um, of um, aspects that uh, affect how we manage, uh, uh, how we produce and how we manage our waste. Yeah. I don't know if you, can, if you can share any more thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, the idea is that, I mean, we are, especially we as engineers, you know, we focus on our problem. We have to build and... Uh, uh, anaerobic digestion plant and uh, together with the storage area and so on and we built it we make that all very nicely it's working but we don't care what is around if we have trees around if we can use that also for energy production um, if we have the possibility to um, use synergy synergistic effects that we have other um, uh, companies that can use the heat or whatever happens so that we don't see only our our plan directly but we see the potential what can we do it is often done there are there are there are examples where, where, where that has been done but it is really not standard and this should be done so that we use the synergistic effects that we have um when we build when we build a plant also for the landfills you know there's a lot of landfills they are just nothing is happening so if we have a kind of in situation stabilize the waste then we can use the surface for all kinds of things but we should have to do that the problem is always always um, it's money yeah first uh, investment uh, but I think in this case we can also uh, use some money from the from the disposal or yeah and um, so that we have that and uh, on the long term on the long run uh, I think it it pays off yeah now with the increase in electricity prices yeah and what is another problem is that is administration I mean it is so terrible our administration kills everything yeah you can have the best ideas but to have that i mean to have have some photovoltaic plates on your roof you must uh, and you want to get rid of i mean you want to feed the electricity into the into the public grid you have to become a, a company i mean to, yeah so because you sell something and all these things, and there is so many things that um, say people, oh no, this is all too complicated. Any other questions? Ideas, or ideas, you know, where we can what could be added actually i mean what what else can we do i think that's that's the point what is important 
Uh, Rainer, I think I'll be, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you for your, your talk. I, I'm just wondering with waste management, by the time waste gets to a landfill, uh, we've really lost most of the battle because we've got all the embodied, as you say, we've got all the embodied um, materials that have been used to make the material that's going to a landfill. So I'm just wondering uh, in terms of the planetary boundaries, where do you think waste management would potentially have the most impact? Would it be in, uh, you know, if we improved the way we managed our waste, would we have the most impact on, on climate change or would it be on, will we have more of an impact on nitrogen and phosphorus dispersal or loss of biodiversity? Where do you think waste management could have the most impact in the planetary boundaries? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we see if, if we see the the, the broad uh, definition of waste management, where we have all the emissions as waste, then it's all over. But I think we have to to look at the the different areas where we work. So this is waste collection. This is um, incineration. It is uh, biological treatment, uh, landfills, and. Um, so we all know that we contribute quite a bit of uh, methane and uh, CO2 to the, to the atmosphere. Uh, th this is not neglect neglectable. Um, so this is, this is one area, but uh, I think all sectors, in all sectors we can do something. That is, first of all, and this is my point, that we, that we uh, negatively contribute to the environmental loading. But my point is also that we should positively work to that. That means we create own, all our own energy. Why should we be able uh, on each plant that we have a windmill, photovoltaic, and try to be energy independent? Why not? Yeah. So mm -hmm. from the technical point of view, and so it could be done. I showed you the picture from the uh, Hamburg sewage um, treatment plant. Yeah. And when you talk to them, yeah, this is this is great. It, it, I think that one has three, three megawatt peak. Yeah, so you can do quite a bit uh, with this uh, with this electricity. So not only see the, the reduce the negative one and introduce the positive ones. I think that's mm -hmm. that's the message. Okay. Great. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Rainer. Another question, please. A comment. What a small uh, question. Yeah, also. Dr. Yamani. How do we encourage this recycling and our uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, the short source package and increase the tax those who are not following? Sorry, I can't understand yeah, we you. Can't, we can't hear anything. We can't understand you. No, no. no. Sorry. Sorry. No. 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 How to encourage the, uh, the recycling concept or uh, the, uh, the product should go back for reuse, something like that, whether we can uh, do some tax incentives or those who are not following, we can put more tax like that. What is your suggestion? Did you understand, Evangelos? No, not I clear. Couldn't, I couldn't understand no. either. Maybe, no. maybe a little louder. Hello. Yeah. Sir, we, uh, what I am saying is how to encourage the recycling in the field. See, for example, if your product it has got a scope for thirty percent recyclable, or the product is taken back by the producer. So for that, how to uh, encourage them or by doing some tax incentives or those who are not following, put more tax, environmental tax. Like that, is it possible? What is your suggestion in this? Okay, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. So, it's so not a question, yes. Any, any so, other... Any other comments, questions, comments? Hmm? 
Mario. Ja, wo ist Mario? <lacht> Mario ist hier. Ja. In Jurati ist auch hier. I think Austria, Austria is very, very advanced in these areas, in these sectors. And uh, what about the thoughts uh, in, in Austria about that? So I'm sorry, I had problems with my connection <laughs> because oh. I was on the way from an external meeting back to the Institute. Oh, sorry. Uh, but you know, yeah, Austria is, is usually um, seen as a country with high environmental standard. And, in some cases, this is true, but of course, there's also a lot of open space to the top. Yeah, mm. you know uh, what we have done in the past on the in the academic sector is um, we uh, made a coalition of so-called sustainable universities. Uh, Raffaello posted some um, similar information in the chat. I have seen so 15 universities in in Austria. In, are in a um, cooperation to check the sustainable development goals, all the 17s, um, how fit Austria is um, with respect to these SDGs. And we try to find options um, for further management uh, in diverse sectors to implement the ideas mm -hmm. of the SDGs in Austria. And also, of course, waste management is um, requested uh, particularly in the SDG 11 and 12. And yeah, here we're also working interdisciplinary and also transdisciplinary with uh, diverse stakeholders from the ministry and so on. I think this is, is um, currently one of the most interesting discussion um, on yeah implementing sustainable lifestyle, sustainable management thinking um, in Austria. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Uh, can you explain ST3 that for the known European? Pardon? What is ST3? ST3, the Sustainable Development okay. Goals. You know, the seven uh, goals the, by the, the United Nations. Uh, from UN. Okay, yeah, sorry. zero yeah. hunger to um, yeah, 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 yeah. Base climate change and, and yeah, the 17 yeah, goals. Always problems with the abbreviations. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. No yeah, but this is exactly what we have to do. And uh, good that um, this, the, the discussion starts with that. And we all know, I, if I think about my, my university when I was active, how difficult it was, you know, just to convince people from other disciplines how important environmental engineering is. Yeah? So I hope that changes and uh, we have really to, to work hard on that. I think that is really important. Of course, we need all the scientific waste management. I mean, this is this is not not that I question that, not not at all. This is on top of that, yeah. To 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 bring all our uh, waste management uh, activities in a perspective, in the broader perspective. That is my point. May May I add something? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Rainer. This is is the future task. Because I think when we talk about an uh, honest circular economy, everybody currently is talking about circular economy. And I think the circular thinking is what we did in waste management since decades of years now. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so some of the new ideas uh, in, in circular economy is not really new for waste management people. And I think um, not to... Uh, have a new innovation and to find uh, the wheel again and again. I think it's very important to get in, in touch with other sectors, uh, industrial sectors, sectors um, in diverse disciplines uh, yeah. to share our yeah. already experiences on these issues. Yeah, yeah, you're completely right. Yeah, that's what we have to do. Yeah. Okay. We have more questions or comments? If not, I'd like to thank Rainer very, well, very much for your presentation, Rainer. Um, and uh, every one of you for um, the first lecture today. The next one is next month, um, February 25th. And the speaker will be Professor Lee from Korea. So, yeah. He is a uh, professor. 
Okay. Let me also thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, we keep in touch with this subject. I think we have to further develop that. The problem is, you know, I don't have the, I can only spread some ideas and I cannot really work on that because I don't have my group anymore. But I think starting some initiatives is also not too bad. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. See you Thanks next lot, month. Ryan. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. All the bye -bye. best. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thanks, Raina. Bye. 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 bye.